Welcome to another edition of the Full Arch Masters podcast. I'm Dr. Ryan Dunlop, and I'm here again in Fresno, California. It is July uh, 2023, and we are uh, on day four, finishing up uh, another flagship Full Arch Masters course. We've got doctors here from literally all across the globe, and I'm super excited to introduce you all to them and to have a quick discussion about what we do here at Full Arch Masters and why these gentlemen are so special. So welcome, guys. Um, you're here on day four of Full Arch Masters. You're not done yet. There's got a few hours left of information we've got to cram into your brain, but we're going to take a little break here and just have a little chat. Uh, let's just kind of go around the group. I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Mitharo. Introduce yourself, where you're from, and you know, uh, and anything that uh, you know you, you want the, the people to know. Hi there. Yeah, I'm so I'm Dr. Manny Matharu. Um, I'm from uh, the UK, England, just in a, a small town called Kent, just the southeast uh, of uh, of London. And uh, I came uh, to this course after speaking to you for for some many years, making the decision. I knew I wanted to do this, and uh, really was to gain a big insight into the digital uh, concepts associated with full arch surgery. We're still doing things uh, uh, commonplace in a very analog and uh, old school uh, method. And uh, I wanted to learn how to do that, and it seems quite restrictive. There's lots of uh, pitfalls and things that complica seem complicated. And uh, from what I've seen online, you'd made it like there was a, a logical uh, flow to it. So uh, that was my reason for attending. And um, I think that this course has uh, gone above my expectations. Not just the course, but the ethos, the team that you have here, um, from from the clinical side to the lab side, the administrative. It's a, it's a fantastic setup and I probably learned more than I thought I was going to not just a part of the digital side but the whole process which I'll take back to my practice for sure great well it was a pleasure having you thank you doc hi yeah so I'm, I'm Colin Dr Neil from uh, Gloucestershire the Cotswolds area of England uh, we have a, a group of practices out there um, I've been doing uh, full arch since 2007 so lots of arches uh, but analog um, so we've we've kind of uh, we have done digital with a kind of stackable guide kind of approach, um, but we are setting up our own lab and really we're here to, to really put the whole process together in a digital way. And uh, to reiterate Manny's words, I think you've done that brilliantly. Uh, I think you've got a great setup and yeah, we'll be absolutely taking loads of learning back to, uh, to the Cotswolds. And just for clarification, you guys had no idea when you signed up that there was going to be a countryman joining you. No, I didn't. Uh, in <laughs> fact, I messaged you saying, uh, has anyone else come from the UK before? And you said no. So, right. uh, so yeah, so that's first, first in there for the UK and then you got in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope we're starting a fire in the yeah. UK. Yeah. Well, welcome to both of you guys. Mm -hmm. Doc, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, you bet. Uh, Dr. Ben Andrew, uh, Sherwood, Oregon. And I'm in a group practice with Dr. Nathan Doyle. But, you know, our, our journey has uh, started maybe 2018 with the, the full arch. Typically analog, mostly analog. And, and really, it's digital workflow. We needed to know that. That was the next step. You know, we have had issues with that. We just didn't know how to put all the pieces together. We didn't have anybody to guide us. And that's where we met you. And we feel like that that's, we're going to do this. And we're very excited. And uh, really... And the camaraderie today, just the feeling like part of a group, as you say, the fam. Right. And I'm kind of resisted that at first, but no, I, I can join in the fam. I think I have a lot to add, and I think we can all learn together, and we're going to move forward. And we're excited. Great. So, it, was, it was great having you this week. Yeah. Dr. Doyle? Uh, Dr. Nathan Doyle and Dr. Andre and I have been working together for about 20, 22 years. Yeah. So it's been a long time. And we actually started at, um, the Stackable Guides uh, as well. And so the digital part was the beginning. So we did everything planning all digital. We ended in, in analog. So transitioning to the, the prosthetic part right. is the hard part for us. The, all the pitfalls we've been looking at as we've been trying to go through the digital part of it uh, for the prosthetics. And so that's where we really wanted to come here. And, and we got the information. I love going to the lab as well, meeting with them, seeing what they need, seeing how they go through the process of, of getting their the, the models from us so if we don't give them good stuff, they don't know how to do, they can't get right. the good stuff back to us. Garbage in, garbage, garbage out, in. right. So getting that information to them and seeing how they handle it was, was that was for us, was, was what we needed to see. And, and the steps to make things uh, most predictable for us to be able to give our patients the, the final you know, piece that they need. So I still love the digital, I love guides. I love, I love getting my implants exactly where I want them, quickly, easily, and then 
being able to convert that last part into the digital prosthetic part. Which is right, totally not having form. a prefabricated prosthetic that you need to fit to that. Do that, right, right. right. And we've done that for years, and we're right. good at that. There's nothing wrong with it. Right, right, and you can do that, but then this is the kind of, for us, the next step to make it completely digital. So, right, Yeah. awesome, okay. great, glad you had a good time. Doc? Dr. Rich McKinney from Priest River, Idaho. Uh, just been excited all week, uh, having a chance to have a mini reunion with my dear friends, Dr. Andaru, Dr. Doyle. Uh, kind of, I remember when they started on this journey, I was still an associate in their practice and was a fly on the wall for a number of cases. And uh, now I've got my own practice um, into that for about a year now. I just wanted to take a giant leap forward. And uh, you know, I'm starting at ground zero. Uh, I've got a taste of the analog uh, process. It's uh, frustrating and I, I didn't want to start out that way. So I've been in search for what would be the right fit for me where I'm at in my career. And when I discovered this opportunity to really learn from a master like Dr. Dunlop and really learn uh, uh, the digital workflow, I just had to do it. I could not, I couldn't afford not to do it. Right. Um, so I'll just, it's been a wonderful week, uh, a lot of education and, and great camaraderie. Agreed. So let me ask you guys, um, one of the themes of the week is empowering you as the doctors to take more and more oversight and more control over this process. <clears throat> I think a lot of us, or maybe all of us would agree that one of the biggest pitfalls of full arch dentistry is when it's outsourced and it's not done by you or it's done by a third party who's not there, you just lose a little bit of the control of the process and you end up in a place where you don't know how to you know, recapture the accuracy or recapture the case. Um, having been here at Full Arch Masters, let's talk a little bit about how important uh, doctor oversight is for this process. And when you get back to your practices, how, how much do you think you're gonna work on controlling this process even more so that you have less mistakes, less error, and how important is that in the full arch practice? Like, how important is it to have control over that process to minimize error? What do you think? I agree, I think this is why exactly why we're starting our own lab, you know, building, building a lab from the ground up effectively, and having this insight before we go ahead and fully do that is valuable, you know, for us. Um, Really, it's been a case of putting the pieces of the jigsaw together, really, you know, and seeing the kind of stuff you, you've invested in, of course, means that we, we can avoid those expensive errors. Right, yeah. absolutely. Now, you guys have some, some of you guys already have some semblance of labs. You know, uh, how important is that, you, do you feel, for the full arch doc to have I, this? Critical. I mean, that's what we really came here for. We, yeah. we, we can place the implants. <clears throat> that was the, the, I mean, that wasn't the hardest part of this, was getting the implants in place. Right. It seemed like that was, that was the the small part of, of what we really needed to see, right. it was everything else that went around it. Yeah. And that's what was critical for us, was seeing how all those different options, and I love the fact that we got to see different options. Like, right. we got to see different ways of doing the same digital platform, and we got to see it not only theoretically, but we got to see it in patient's mouths, we got to see patients come back that, you, that we had right. with you the other day. I think that was, that was critical, to see how all that translates into actual clinical experience. And, uh, and then going to the lab with that. Right. So, and then doing our own hand, uh, hands-on models as well. Right. Placing the you know, implants in the models, going to see how that can, translates to the lab, sitting with the, uh, the designers. I mean, right. all those little pieces help us to be better dentists. So I, that's what I really appreciated about this, right. this, uh, this uh, course that we took the last four days. It's been fantastic. Cool. And then Dr. Marthrow, you said you already have a lab or you're building a lab? Already have. Yeah, you already have. So. Tell us about that you know, process and how important that is for the full arch practice. I think uh, uh, with the jo implant journey, regardless of the single or multiple, the destination is, is really important. And if you can know that before you start of where, uh, where you need to end up, then you can do all the other stages more accurately um, to be able to facilitate the best possible outcome. Otherwise, you always end up making compromises. We know it's been in the situations before where you put an implant in and then you, you think, oh, it should have gone this way, or it should have been there, or this should have been. So um, I quickly realized that that was going to be helpful. Hence, I set up my laboratory uh, nine plus years ago to allow me to take control over the destination. And now when it's come to full arch, it was a little bit more uh, complicated because uh, like you said, that destination is in the hands sometimes of the tech who's coming, who's making that immediate load prosthesis. So um, this allows us to um, really control that. So use, I, I also agree with Dr. to have guided surgery to help plan the implant position. But now here, 
we've got uh, a digital mindset that we've put into that full arch process that not only, you know, when you come in novice and you just think, oh, I want to 3D print a set of teeth and fit them in. It's not just that. It's like, you know, the pre-op records, taking the digital pictures, taking the scans, using the photogrammetry, all these little bits of the puzzle that allow you to achieve that same, uh, know the destination and result. So uh, like, again, like Dr. Phil said, I wanted to get that side of, that was really important. So I could then slot that into my uh, laboratory back in the UK. Or if I didn't have a laboratory, I would know pretty much from this course what to do. Uh, and I mentioned the other interviews, real life. So we go to courses sometimes, you practice on models, which is really fundamental and great to understand that. But then to be able to see it actually working and to keep on repeating that, to say, okay, now we do the video, we go to the patient, and this is how we do it. Because you, you do it on models, you do it in the classroom, and then you go to the thing and you think, even from the point of where is the video gauge, who's got it, the nurse is looking for it, just to know. Right, that, get that routine and predictability. And so I didn't bring my, the rest of my team, like some of the other guys who are a bit more local to the USA, but I can see the benefit of having the rest of the team on board and seeing that they're, they're watching and looking and saying, where do I sit into this role of the pre predictability of helping this process? So I think it's really helpful. And if, if I could go back now, I bring more people along. Yeah, I well, think that, that would be a worthwhile. That was, that was perfect timing. That was my next question. Uh, Dr. McKinney, I think you brought a couple of team members with you. What do you how, how important do you think that is to this process, is involving your team? I think if I would not have brought them, I would have not set myself self up for the success that we're going to have because now they understand how important the process is from the treatment planning to uh, financing options to the digital workflow. Uh, they're, they're great, they're, they're willing to learn, um, and I would not have been able to transfer this knowledge to them by myself alone. So it, it would have uh, not, again, not set me up for success. Right, right. And you, some of you guys have really big operations. I know some of you have 30, 40, even 50 employees. So how do you think you're gonna be able to go back, Dr. Andre, let's say, how do you go back and translate some of the things you saw to the rest of the team? Sure, um, or we have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. That's, that's, that's really it. Right. Um, no, the, pe the folks that came just really enjoyed it. We, they're hungry, they, they, they want to learn more. They, they're pushing us to have our own lab. It's, right. that's, this has been, this, what keeps me up at night? The prosthetic. Right. And so I mean, all of us, the surgery, we can all do that, but it's the prosthetic and how the with passive fit. Right, so, and managing the patient's yeah, expectations yeah. is exactly. really yeah. hard. Exactly, so I, I think, um, well, translating it back home, no, they'll have, we'll have to come. Right. And we have, we've got a group that, within our general dentistry practice, we have the implant part in the, in the general dentistry. Right. As we're trying to phase out and do more of the implant part, we're gonna have that, we have about three or four folks that are gonna need to come back and, and learn. And so, we, we have some homework, homework to do, but we feel like we can now move forward with some things that we didn't know. Right, right. That's good. I want to talk just briefly maybe to, to you guys on the side here. Full arch dentistry in America is really taking off in the mainstream way. And you're seeing, we're starting to see full arch become almost like a commodity that people want. And they come in asking for a procedure that they don't really know anything about. They don't know if they qualify. They may know someone who did it. So they're coming in, in my practice, and probably for, with you guys too, uh, preloaded with a lot of information about full arch. What is the full arch environment like in the UK? And, and are you guys seeing the same type of explosion and interest in this? Or is it still kind of, uh, you know... It's a lower level of lower level. for sure. Yeah. Right. We're nowhere near the kind of level of saturation that you have here. Um, and I think that for us is a... An opportunity, you know, right. for sure. There's lots, of, lots of patients will need this, of course. And there's a gap between needing it and being aware of it. Right. So there's not as much of a awareness of these types of procedures in the UK. Yeah, for sure. But it's growing. Inevitably, it's it's going to creep up, and you know, we'll be at the kind of American level maybe at some point. Right. Um, well, it's up to you guys, yeah. you know, as our first two delegates from the United Kingdom, uh, to take this information back and spread the gospel, so to speak. Um, but you, would you echo that? Or yeah. any? I think, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a great treatment solution for, for patients and uh, it's becoming more commonplace and that's, you know, more practices are, are trying to implement it, but it's not, I don't think it's just a simple procedure that uh, people can jump on, like going on a, on a course, like uh, I, I, we've been in a group of people who have clearly got lots of experience with, with implants and we're not just So I think uh, in the UK, uh, because it's a bit smaller, 
Um, people are not scared, but they're you know just being careful and, and the litigious nature of what we do with that and the prosthetic and right. So yeah. it's been a bit slower, and the technology that's uh, it's I think it's like now it's the peak, you know, the photogrammetry things like that. Yeah. So um, I think once it becomes more of a streamlined workflow we can see even even from this course that there's so many different workflows to do there's not just right. one way to do it right and uh, uh with single implants has become more you know we know that a tie base is not the best option now we look at other so i think when that becomes more streamlined and narrowed down it probably get more popular right. uh, for, for them to be able to come so so we need you to come to the uk for to, to run the uk branch of for large i like that That's no it. you guys are going to run it <laughs> i'm just going to help you set it up <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah no i agree i think that uh, I think that full arch dentistry has been popular in many countries, but I think the U.S. has really taken uh, charge in terms of the number of cases that are being done and kind of the economic growth. But I see this as a worldwide phenomenon. And I think that this technology that you guys got exposed to this week with 3D printing and the accuracy with photogrammetry and some of the other things that we talked about, it's going to open up a huge market worldwide for dentists everywhere um, to do these cases um, because, you know, traditional analog techniques are hard and they're laborious and they're expensive. And we're able to basically print a set of teeth for people while they wait. And the cost is astronomically lower. So I see this as a huge worldwide opportunity to increase global health and oral health um, to provide access to an amazingly larger group of people. Um, so I'm excited that you guys are part of this phenomenon and part of this growth. We're kind of the, the leading edge of this. So where do you guys see yourselves in your community, uh, Dr. Doyle? What, like in your community, uh, how is this technology going to impact your patients? Uh, I think for, for us, it's going to be the, the satisfaction at the end, you know, moving things more cleanly at the end. Um, getting the implants in place, having them walk out with a prosthetic the same day, we've done that for years. I think this may make it cleaner, uh, even that process, and give us a little heads, a little more um, headway for the beginning of the, of the final process. So that's where we've had the biggest issues is the prosthetic at the end. And uh, that's where we want to make sure we cut that, um, that time down, cut that experience into a, a situation where patients are, are have an easier time at the end to, for, for satisfaction. Right. And so that's why I think the more we can do that and the better we can do that, the more cost effective we can be at that, the more we can, we can spread the gospel. Yeah, right. Yeah. Provide high quality care to more people is the goal, right? Um, well, let's, let's talk quickly. I think maybe you guys expected this or maybe you didn't. Did, uh, did you foresee learning from so many different people while you were here this week? Or did you think it was going to be kind of like a one-man show where it was just you and me talking all week? And if so, you know, what were your thoughts on that? And how, what do you think about the team that you met while you were here? I, my, my first impression was, first of all, you're very nice. And that was very <laughs> impressive to me that you're very nice, very approachable. Um, I like that in, in anybody who speaks. You know, not that I am the god of, of everything and nobody else can touch, you know, teaching. I'm the only guy. I love the fact that you you allow others to speak and allow others to share their their expertise, and so I thought for us, I thought your whole team was so cordial and so willing to um, to share, and that's what impressed me the most. My brain kept going, okay, what's he doing behind the scenes to empower all of his team members to be so open and inviting and sharing, and there's not this feeling of. Um, we'll share it with you if you give us more money. We'll right. share this with you if you give us more money. Right. It's not that. I didn't feel that. I, I felt, okay, these are the options we have. Come learn. Come learn everything. And that feeling of open door just makes me want to come back. You know, I want to come back. I want to tell my other friends that are interested in this to come back here because they're not going to be, they're not going to be, now that you have a little bit of information, I'm going to charge you more for the next information. It's just, right. it's like, hey, I've got all of you. I got your back. I want you to succeed. Right. And I'll let you have access to all my team. Because you trust, you obviously trust your team to treat us in a really a cordial way, and they all have. That's been really impressive to me. That means the leadership at the top is doing a good job. So kudos to you. Oh, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. I do try to give as much credit to my team. What, Dr. McKinney, any positive, negative experiences with the team this week? Everyone on your team has been stellar. Um, they've been willing to help at all stages. Um, cordial, pleasant, nothing but positive things to say. 
And I'd say about, you know, what I respect about you, I think the most is that, um, you know, implant dentistry, it's a restorative discipline with a surgical component. And right. I think a lot of our specialist colleagues don't, you know, appreciate that. And that general dentists have really been innovators in implant dentistry going back to, you know, Hill Tatum, right. who we've all been mentored by and, and, and coached by too. So um, I think you're in that league as well, as far as this digital workflow and you been in the trenches and so we're we have the opportunity to learn from you know your mistakes and, and I, I appreciate that. a lot I appreciate that mm -hmm. you being willing to share that and, and you know, offer your expertise to us All right well it's been a great week um, you know just as you approach your last half a day here right so we've got we're gonna have everything on display for you guys right so what are you guys gonna focus on in your last half day at Full Arch Masters any ideas? Just I uh, recently went on holiday with my family and it was like, to a water park and the water park was closing mm -hmm. and uh, there's less people at the water park now. Right. So all the slides were accessible and I was like, I want to go on that one, I want to go on that one, I want to get, but I had to choose one. So I chose to be done. But it's like that now because it's like everything's open. I'm like, where do I go? I want to check the lab again, go to the surgery. So um, the water park's open. I think. Back to the lab because Thanks that's the, the bit. Yeah, that's the bit that we haven't got at home. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, but it's a, it's it's a really like, so it's a really open environment, and your your team have been absolutely fantastic. I think I reiterated that amongst our colleagues and to yourself as well. Right. That the openness has been uh, really, uh, very very uh, a different way from many courses that have been right. uh, approached. And again, clearly by your leadership. Awesome. Thank you. What, what's what's the plan for the rest of the day? So uh, I, I brought some key team members with me, as you know. Right. Um, so we're going to get our heads together and just find out exactly what we want to just finish off on. I right. think probably it's going to be in the lab, though, to be fair. <laughs> you know what I say about lab? Yeah. It's where the cool kids hang out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, like in high school with that alley or that backstop where all the cool kids hang out. Yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Last last half a day or fam, what's on the agenda? We, we made a list already. You made <laughs> a list. Oh, yeah. lab. Did. A lot it's a lab. lab. It's lab. Yeah. So lab, 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 and I think we want to try to take a bite out of uh, everything that's left to see. Right, yeah. a little bit of everything. You can all the slides. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all the slides as quick as you can. Um, okay, well, uh, l lastly, let's just go around the horn one more time. And, you know, if somebody's watching this and they're thinking, you know, I, I don't know if I should take Flark Masters, mm -hmm. what would you say? We'll start back with you, Dip. Like I said, I really with the new new practice acquisition and all the changes, and you know, I see more cash leaving than coming in right now um, really I couldn't afford to be here but like I said I could not I couldn't afford not to be here so I just I'm making it happen so I said if you're in that position and this you think this is something you want to do um, just do it yeah let's do it what do you think that uh, I'm same I, I think uh, I think one of us said earlier is why don't we do this earlier that was like one of the questions is we, we started feeling the pains of that final prosthetic part uh, a while ago we've right. been going through our um, our trial and error of trying to get this. We're like, let's get somebody. Let's get somebody's doing this right. already, and get their information and figure out, help them, let them help us do that right. part. And then, of course, Rich called us and said, "Hey, I'm going." And we're like, "Okay, I'll go." And then he's like, "Dang it, a whole week <laughs> off!" Ah. Right. And then we all came, and then the final, yeah, sure. all three of us talking, and it was like, "Yeah, we needed to be here." Right. Yeah, it sucks to come out for a week. You take a week off, you're you're it's, off. You're, it's a big investment. Big investment. <clears throat> you mean time off and everything else. Travel. And time for, but then these guys came from UK, so right. I, mean, I can't complain too much. That's we true. came from just north of you, but right. in the end, we all said the same thing: it's not worth it. Great. So, it's I, and idea. Nate and Rich said a lot there. I just say if you're if you're considering coming or not, um, the digital workflow, getting out of analog, and helping, and it's not the process is not perfect. We're going to learn together. If things don't quite work, right. we're going to be better. You know, but you're going to be part of a group <clears throat> that can help guide you. That's awesome. So, of course, we've come a long way. The English accent tells. Um, it's a big investment of time and money, of right. course, but it's been well, well worth it. So, yeah, yeah, thank you again. Great. Someone, same Likewise, thing. yeah. And I think it's just a, uh, being part of that journey. So, it's uh, you're obviously, you're at the edge of what we're doing. It's not the, uh, it's not the end, is it? It's, it? We're always innovating in our, in our field. And uh, if you're not part of this and you're not willing to invest into, into this, um, somehow, the, the digital workflow, the prosthetic that side, then uh, you're not going to be at that with peers, like minded people that are pushing it. So I right. think you need to just make the plunge and, and jump on it. It's a big cost and investment, but that will uh, pay back. It will pay back. 
many ways. And because of you guys, I need a bigger map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes me happy. I think what we said earlier too is like you can wait for the iPhone 20 to come out. Right. You know, or you can get the iPhone right now and, and start using it. Right. And eventually the next iPhone will come out and the next thing will come out. Right. But you don't, you don't sit and wait. You, you don't, don't sit wait, with yeah. your flip phone right now and go, right. I'm just going to be sitting here waiting for the, for the next version to come out. You've got to start. And yeah, yeah you're going to buy the current version. And then five years from now, someone's going to come out with a better version of the technology we've been working right. with. And right. You and you'll just, already be ahead of the curve. Right. You already know the, the pitfalls and you already know right. how to, what to look for. You right. know? Otherwise, you, you know, you're sitting back with a flip phone. That's true. Well, again, thank you guys. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a truly a pleasure and an honor for me uh, to be part of your journey. Um, and the, it doesn't end here. Full Arch Masters is a group that keeps going. And uh, I always say your success is our success, right? Um, so uh, again, I appreciate all of you taking time out of your lives and your, your careers to be here. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for turning in to another edition of the Full Arch Masters podcast. Again, I'm Dr. Ryan Dunlop. I am here in Fresno, California, July 2023, with yet another successful completion of a Full Arch Masters flagship course. We've had an amazing week. Uh, it's not finished. We're going to finish strong here in the last part of day four. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us at uh, fullarchmasters.com. So hope you're having a great day and uh, have a fantastic day.